Hi, I'm Mark Richard Adams, post-production specialist. Come join me on Colour Me In for another post-production demonstration. Hey, and welcome back. And today we're going to look at Resolve. And I've previously done some basic tool sort of demos on Resolve, such as the RGB uh, channel mixer, which is um, proven quite popular. Um, today I just wanted to have a look at the curves. The curves are quite interesting because they give you slightly more depth and an interesting way to start your grade actually. I always actually use curves to start grading. Um, let's see what we have. We, if we jump to the color page and resolve, um, you can see that I've got a clip. Um, uh, this is Ed, an incredible uh, Pro Tools mixer, and he's been very kind to allow us to use this image of him. Um, but you can see it's particularly clamped. It's very down. We don't have necessarily in the waveform here any particular black areas, but we're, we're getting close to it, okay. Um, particularly dark room, not very well lit. Um, so let's see what we can do. Obviously when you're grading, you need the scopes up. You need to be able to see what's going on. Um, uh, just for this demo, I'm just gonna look at the waveform and the vector scope. So the luminance of the image, the lights and the darks, and also the chrominance of the image, okay. Indication of where the chrominance sits, uh, whether it's, you know, it could be a black and white image or whether it's, completely uh, rich with saturation and which way it's veering to. So if we have a look at the curves, you'll find it down here in the middle um, on this particular layout. Um, it's the uh, sort of like the weird S shape and then we have the curves window here. And we've got loads of tools down the side. Now, the way this works um, from a 101 perspective is that top right hand corner is the lights of the image this particular mark here the lights of the image and bottom left hand corner the darks of the image okay and this line going through is just the link between the lights and the darks and this line we use to manipulate the image so we can see on the scope we're sitting about 50 percent down okay on the lights now if we look at this image where are the whites so these these two peaks here and this peak here so these peaks where do they sit where are they on the on the image well, they're more than likely going to be probably the luminance coming off these screens here, more than likely. Um, so we've got a peak um, brightness to, to, to go to. Now, on the curves, what we want to do is I would normally always grab the top marker here, and I'm just going to drag it to the left, and you see what happens. The image is increasing in brightness, okay? Almost like we're opening the, the iris of the exposure, okay? Um, but if we drop it and move it to the right, we can actually constrain it, it's gonna get darker, okay? So if I wanted to fix this image, I'm gonna pull this in all the way back. And you can see the, these lines are fixed, okay? So everything is moving at the same rate. Um, this black point is, marker is fixed. So if I bring that, and I wanna bring those two white marks probably just under this 1023 line, which is indication in HD of peak white, okay? Uh, you can see the image is starting to break up slightly. Um, so we're gonna to need to mend the blacks. It's looking a little bit, uh, noisy. Okay, so I'm now going to grab the um, the bottom mark here, which indicates the black. So you see what happens here. I can actually lift the bottom part of the image up if I go up directly up, or I can actually constrain it and bring the whole image down slightly here. Now I don't want to go too too peak black. I don't want to go to this here. So I've got my black sitting on the black line because it's just too much. You can see that probably in real life this shadow underneath the desk wouldn't be true black that wouldn't be true black. This desk isn't true black in real life. So remember, you grade with the scope, but also you grade with the eyes. Does that look good to you? Okay, so I'm gonna open that out slightly. I'm gonna to go to about there. Now I'm just gonna turn that on and off. You can see the difference, huge difference already with the curves, okay? Fixed point. Now you can see here, um, I'm actually um, amending or manipulating the entire image, of course, but if we go over to this tool set here, we can see that Resolve gives you the ability to play with the RGB channels. Now, if you turn off the link, now I can cha change the luminance only, or I can change the red channel. So if you could look at the red channel, I could actually ma manipulate the red channel. Now, what is happening here when I do this? Now, I am I'm grabbing the uh, top white of the, the red channel and I'm moving it out to the right which means that it's, it's removing reds from the top end white channels, which would indicate sort of his, the lightness of his skin, the lightness of his face, or I could actually increase it. And you can see that the blacks are fixed in place. So there is manipulation all the way through this angle here. So this angle here 
so there is manipulation all the way down here even in the dark parts of the image now I could move that back to where it was originally and I could say well okay I don't want to move the lights of the image I actually want to move the red darks of the image okay and I can do that by pulling those lower dark reds out or increasing them and you can see there's a difference in color uh, manipulation there or if you want to do jump into the middle of the image at a point and I could increase or decrease those that the red channel um, in this particular the middle area or I can move it to the first quarter or the last quarter of the image so there's lots of manipulation that we're, we're able to do in that okay and you can also do the same with the greens and also the blues okay so if I jump over to the blues and I'm gonna decrease the blues in the, in the lighter parts of the image here or I can increase the blues so decreasing the blues looks slightly better to me looks good and let's have a little play with the lower end blues not really helping there. I'm going to keep that where they are and let's have a look at the greens and I'm just going to replace you see I'm just manipulating each one I'm just playing with each one seeing what effect I get now I think that's pretty good I'm going to minimize that so I'm going to turn that grade on and off okay so we've gone from that image to this image um, and it's looking pretty good now there are other tools I would use of course to try and decrease this noise um, try and focus on the contributor and you know so maybe sort of um, alter the background in some way but that's not what this video is about this video is it's purely just about um, the curves today what else does this curves um, panel give you well if we turn all these um, channels back on we can see that we have the ability to constrain the entire image not from a curves perspective but actually it's almost like a, a second a secondary color correction here or a secondary manipulation of those channels we can actually reduce the luminance and bring it back up again I don't often use these but what is interesting but if you turn the link off you can independently control the reds the greens and also the blues which is very very similar to the RGB channel not totally but similar um, What's really cool about Resolve is it gives you the ability to uh, manipulate an image in multiple different ways and it really is up to you how you want to manipulate that image. So if I felt there was too much red in it, I could just click off the link and just have a little, little play there without going back into the curves and manipulation. This is, so this is more of a secondary color correction. Um, so I'm happy with that. What we could also do as well, we can go down to the clips. So this is very self-explanatory, the lower clips and the higher clips. Now, the low clips you can see, if you look at the bottom, if I can start to constrain that, we can start to clamp some of that image. You can see the image looks slightly odd, so this is obviously not a good manipulation, but we could, if we wanted to tidy up some of those, some of those, some of those uh, buzzy areas, as it were. But I'm sort of happy with that. We can also apply a softness to that clip, so which sometimes is better. And if we go to the higher clip, it will do the opposite. It will do the top end of the image. So I'm going to constrain the top end of the image, almost like a clipper in a sense. And we can soften that too. So it's not so harsh. So these are more secondary color corrections off the back of the curves, but they're still quite important to use. Um, anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, and have a play with it. Click on the link turn the link off go to RGB and play with the image make sure that you're always looking at the waveform so you can actually see how the image is being manipulated alongside what the image actually looks like um, and then do some quick enable disables um, and that will give you a really good indication of where you're going with this color correction there's multiple different ways there's no there's no right and wrong really for a grade or a color correction it really is about you and how you feel um, but have a play the curves is a great place to start the color correction. I always start with the curves and then I move on to um, you know, the RGB channel or I'll move on to the color wheels or I'll move on to something else. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. If you liked that video, please give me a like or subscribe or type in down below demos you'd like to see next. Catch you next time.